Panelist Podcast, Kyle here with Jeremiah, Dimitri. Pierre's here, Panelist Podcast, I'm here. Everyone's been waiting for me since yeah. last week. Great start, everybody. Love it. All right, so today we're talking about the latest Ant-Man trailer. Now, I think we have a previous episode called Ant-Man 3 trailer, so this is going to be final trailer, but that's what we're doing today. We're talking about the newest one. It was on the television. You all hopefully saw it. Looking at you, Dimitri, I'm hoping you watch the trailer. All right, so let's start with MODOK. There's a lot of controversy about MODOK. If you haven't seen, some say he's too human. Some say he's not ugly enough. Some don't like the metal face. Some are confused by the human face. Some of those people don't read comics at all. Total of four seconds we saw MODOK. Two seconds were with the human face. Two seconds with the armored face. I love the look. My mm-hmm. biggest fear was he wasn't going to look like MODOK. My biggest fear is they were going to water him down a lot like Armin Zola when they watered him down for Captain America. But they clearly didn't. He's grotesque and ugly and in his hover chair like he is above my head right there. I'm in love with this MODOK. I'm not going to edit that in, but uh, nice try. I'm just reading your note. Your note said Modoc yucky face. Oh, I did write uh, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I thought it was exactly what we needed. I'm happy about that. I'm glad that he's not just a metal face. I felt it would have been a cop out, but it looks like Darren Cross, those rumors were true. I don't think it's ugly enough. You don't think it's, it's ugly just enough. his face, right? Yeah, it's pretty much just no, his face. No, it's just his face. So they should have crushed his like... face and like made it look like it's like uncrushed. They should have scrunched hmm. it. So you want no? to scrunch Am I wrong here? They should have scrunched it a little. They should have scrunched it a little. I mean, he could go mad during the movie. Like, there's a good chance that the first time we see MODOK, he's going to be called MODOK, but with a C, not a K. Mental organism designed only for computing. And then eventually he's going to go mad and become the mental organism only designed for killing. That's what MODOK stands for. So I'm guessing that pretty version of him that we see is going to change throughout the movie, whether it just becomes the armored face version or he gets grotesquefied. I believe the first time we see MODOK, he's going to be sane and with it and put together. And I believe that he will unravel throughout the movie. Does everyone Fair think enough. that this is Yellow Jacket from Ant Man, or is this a variant of Yellow Jacket? I hope it's not the original Yellow Jacket. I really hope it's not. I hope it's a variant. I kind of want the original. I feel like I'm cheating because of the rumors. Like, I know all the rumors from before, and <laughs> I think all those rumors are true. So I don't know if I should even comment. Comment! So, apparently, it is the original. He's pissed when he sees them because he wants revenge for them screwing him over. So he's like, oh, I'm going to help Kang. And then apparently turns and turns on Kang. Ant-Man, get out of the quantum realm and beat Kang. Does he go? and become evil after that i i'm with jeremiah on that maybe he comes out of the quantum realm and maybe that scrunches his face he's like ah and now all of a sudden he's angry you know i think that's the face we're getting i'm sorry but i think that's just his human face and the metal one is just going to be the disguise so that when the metal one pops up everyone's like wait a minute you were a villain in the first movie and that's literally the only purpose of the metal mask and whatnot and yes pierre we all acknowledge that you read rumors and you were right you said in multiple episodes i see you dropping hints here i get it you were right you win see i was really hoping it wasn't king as the big bad i was really hoping Hmm that it would be other characters and that Kang would be an afterthought or just come in at the end. I was really hoping for that. But seeing Jonathan Majors in the helmet with the helmet splits apart and he still got blue eyes for that split second. God damn, that was incredible. Yeah. Oh, he's such a good Kang. The Kang costume and yeah the actor choice obviously it's pretty fucking badass like it's spot on i don't believe you can argue that's probably not one of the most comic accurate to screen that we've really had in a way where it's it's, like realistic yeah it is it's perfect i think the fact that he can portray this drastically different kang you know the variants Mm -hmm. i think that's gonna be cool and this is just the first two that we've seen you know it's gonna go into the other ones so i'm just Mm -hmm. excited to see what he does with those roles too now does anyone know if the scars in his face are from the comics. He does not have the scars, at least in the latest iteration of Kang, that is being followed with Timeless right now. To my knowledge, he's never had the scars. The scars, I think, are going to be something to do with the multiple universes. What would be really, really cool is like it was an accident when he was a part of the Young Avengers Hmm. that gave him the scars when he eventually becomes Kang. Do we think we're going to get a Fantastic Four connection because he Hmm. is the great-grandson of Reed Richards? I'll answer that first. No. And it's not no because I don't think it makes sense. No, because I don't think they know what they're doing yet. We would have heard more rumors from Pierre 
at this point about Fantastic Four. I don't think we're getting it just yet. It's going to be its own thing. I don't think we'll see that. If anything, it'll be like a cameo. I don't know if it works. I just want him to say like, oh, my great grandfather was kind of a big deal. I wouldn't Mm. be in the predicament that I'm in if it wasn't for my family. I can help you get more time with yours or less time because they fucked me up. They're going to fuck you up. But isn't he like so far down the line that he... I thought it was too removed i could be wrong there i thought that he was the great great grandson right right i think that's as far down but it's because of the work that reed did that nate was able to do everything if you take it all away he's just a guy his weapons his gadgets and whatnot that make him kang that would be cool if just a little like salt on there but i think they're gonna save that for like a bigger thing like they're gonna make this all about kang it's so much more about kang than i feel like i want it to be right now that's just me way back when when the movie was announced i knew that kang was going to be announced as the big bad but then to see what they're setting up kang for he's going to be the guy for the next three phases i don't want so much of him up front we didn't get thanos really in a Avengers 1, we really didn't get Thanos in Avengers 2. So to get Kang so much up front at the beginning of this phase, I don't want to be tired of him by the time Secret Wars rolls around. But also we're going to get multiple versions of him, so that could be a non-starter. That's just my concern. Yeah, I don't think that's happening, though. I think your concerns are okay. If I had to just take a guess, I don't know what the average villain time is. You know, like, what is their minutes in an average superhero movie for the villain? I don't think we're going to get that with him. Like, I think he's going to say something in the beginning, be absent most of the movie. It's going to be MODOK. It's going to be some other characters we've never heard of. It's going to be that adventure. And in the very end, we're going to get another taste of him. And that's all it's going to be. I don't think Kang is as big of a role in this movie as we think. Uh, That's what I would like. I would like exactly what you just described. Pierre believes otherwise. (laughs) Pierre has read all the rumors. He's your big bad. You're getting all Kang. So there's going to be a little of Bill Murray in there. We'll sprinkle and then Kang. Let's jump to Bill Murray real quick because I know it's been a big question and I dug a little deeper. Bill Murray as Lord Krylar. Sole appearance in The Incredible Hulk 156 in 1972. He died in that issue and never met Ant-Man. So Lord Krylar is who Bill Murray is. Jeremiah, I can't imagine you've heard of this character. I have not. I can tell you who probably did the artwork on that issue was Herb Trempe. Yeah, I think using the name because it sounds kind of quantum-y. That's all I got for you. That's Bill Murray. So he's obviously a throwaway kind of one-shot character that they wanted to incorporate a well-known actor into the MCU somehow. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 huh? wait. I'm going to stop you for two seconds. Someone has Googled. One, I was correct. Uh-huh. Herb Trempe was the artist on the issue. It was I written assume. by Archie Goodman. But the synopsis of this issue is Hulk goes down to the microverse. Mm. Uh-huh. This is an issue that I will have to hunt down and read. Another really fun fact about this issue. So the cover of this issue, the 156, done by Herb Trempe, it was Eric Larson's first ever comic book. So he he actually mm. had Herb Trempe right before he passed away do a Savage Dragon homage to this exact issue. All right. Pretty cool. Dimitri, so. I'm surprised you're on eBay right now trying to find Hulk 156 for a good price. No, I just don't think it's going to uh, matter that much. Do you guys remember from the rumors that Lord Krylar is a love interest of Janet Pym? Yes. I don't dive into the rumors nearly as much as you do, but that makes sense. And I like the feel of that. Imagine bringing your husband down to meet your mistress or whatever that you spent so much time with and that you most likely developed a huge relationship with within this cosmos. Mm-hmm. I wonder if she's talking about him and not Kang. Nope, it's okay. Then that'd be a like a nice red herring like the whole team gets down there and blah 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 blah, and bill murray tries to win them all over and be buddy buddy with scott and janet gives him like that kind of speech and then oh who's really pulling the string hear me out they become a thruple and they stay down there (laughs) (laughs) and have some micro orgies (laughs) <laughs> oh. Oh, all right the next thing is a continuity error that i know dimitri is super familiar with ant-man in endgame of course is seen as a giant right he is in his giant man form yes within a minute he is then seen back in his little form and the argument in endgame is that it doesn't make sense from the scene it was cut to to where he was it didn't line up is there two ant-man could we get eric well the thing is they're saying could this error be corrected by kang by basically something happening in this movie explaining why there was two scott langs running around or something else or is it just so small of an error that they can easily argue of like oh yeah he got there real quick like you missed it yeah i think that's what it is they're not gonna focus on it yeah an opportunity if if they put eric 
Eric in that spot. Oh man. That Kevin Feige would be the quote unquote genius, the accidental genius in that moment. That's the whole thing I was saying. Lean into it. Yeah. They were saying that this little error could turn into something different if they really wanted to. I say no. It just was worth bringing up. Was it worth bringing up? I mean, I thought so. <laughs> I feel it was worth it. I mean, they show multiple Scott Langs in the trailer. Like, they show him side by side with That's himself. True. So it's not crazy to say there's a duplicate in Endgame. We're seeing duplicates in the movie. Okay, I'm just talking just to talk now. Now yeah. you're starting to make points. Oh, that's what it took to get you interested here? You didn't say that when you came up with the point. Why didn't you? Because I thought we all watched well, the same the, trailer. There's a scene he gets buried within a million versions of himself. They're all trying to climb each other up to get to whatever portal's going on, yeah, which is, I'm escape. assuming, Kang taking Cassie or Janet. I like the idea. I like the idea of Eric being a thing. Yeah, I mean, that's not where I was going with it at all, but I'll take it. Next big question. Who's going to die? I think there's going to be like a false thing where Scott Lang dies, okay. but he doesn't. And are you running with that off of the scene where he's like all badass and then Kang's like, you can't win. And he's like, we just got to both lose. You running off of that scene with your theory? Because uh, I could see that. Sure. In your words. Wait, in your words. That's yes, that scene was great. The Pims. All of them? <laughs> Her mom and dad. Natural Hank causes? And Janet. Hank and <laughs> Janet. Or just Hank. It's going to be Hank. Hank will die. Janet, they just rescued so she won't die. Or they'll die together. Or they'll be left behind in the quantum realm to live a happy, thorough life. <laughs> And that's so just a complete God. guess. I believe Kang is going to die, though. I mean, he can. It doesn't throw yeah. a huge wrench in the plans if Kang were to go. I was thinking along the same lines. I think Michael Douglas is getting a little too old. I think Henry's going to bite it. I think Janet's along with him. There's a chance. And I would not put it past them to kill Kang, or at least this version of Kang. I think he's just going to escape by the skin of his teeth alive, though. If they don't kill him, he's like going to be beaten to a bloody pulp and just get out of there. If anything, Michael Douglas's Hank Pym is gone. I like Dimitri's theory. We think Ant-Man goes, but he doesn't. I like Pierre's of Kang. Oh. I like Jeremiah's of just kill off all the old people. But I'm going to fuck all of you up right now. And I say Cassie dies. Now, oh, wait a second. Wait a doesn't second make for the reaction. Inside, it makes I'm sense. Jeremiah. Yeah. Inside, I'm yeah. Jeremiah. Tell me how it makes sense. In the Ultimate the Comics inside. run, Cassie is killed. By not Modoc, not Kang, but a different villain. But it's the MCU and they don't have the rights to everybody yet. So what if Cassie is killed by, say, Modoc, and they're so guilt-ridden that they eventually bring her back to life? No. Nah. Who killed Cassie in the Ultimates universe? So in the Ultimate Comics run, Doctor Doom kills Cassie. Okay, I remember it now. I you think. remember? Okay, yeah. I didn't read it. I read everything after it. If I'm being honest. So what? They're gonna kill her and then just bring her back in the same movie, or like? No, different movie. Down yeah. the road, different movie, None which would so. build Young Avengers. This is a different actress for Cassie. This is not mm -hmm. the actress that was in Endgame. Maybe they do kill her, and the actress that was in Endgame comes back and is a variant. That would be hysterical, but no. How's that's that not for your part rumor mill there, Pierre? <laughs> I deny that. The rumors denied as well. All right. Well, anyway, since we're talking about Cassie Lang, what name do we think she's going by? First? Stature. I think it's Stature, too. Ant Girl. Okay. So it could be Stinger just based off of her costume. Jeremiah, I'm going to revert back. What's Stature's costume look like? Stature's costume looks a lot like the fourth version of Giant Man's. So it's got rivets all the way up the side. It's red and black. Her blonde hair is coming through. She's got kind of a domino mask. I think she's going to be Stinger. I want to take my answer back. I think it's going to be Stinger because of the costume, and I think she'll go to Stature at some point because I believe that's how she joins the Young Avengers. Unless yeah, she's statues on the Young that. Avengers. Yeah, unless oh. they skip it and they just make her singer and she's on the Young Avengers, which they could do. It doesn't really matter. But I think the idea of her being on the Young Avengers is to fill the Ant-Man, Giant-Man role, where the Stinger role is more along the lines of Wasp. And although Wasp is an original member of the Avengers, which is the only original member that everyone forgets, not this version of Wasp wasn't. So <laughs> I don't see them making that connection. I think she's going to be stature. No, I think Stinger as well, just because it sounds cooler. And that's literally like my only logic here that they'll just go with a cooler sounding name because it's going to sell MC more action figures. Fans, yeah, well, exactly. Stinger is the more current. But she was stature for way longer than she's been yeah, Stinger. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, but it, fuck it, people who read, right? That's yeah. not what they give a fuck about. <laughs> I think they are setting up Young Avengers with it. So I think there's a very strong chance that stature is definitely going to come up. I like how I agree with you and then you change your answer back. Let's talk about Nate Richards. Who's now, Nate we mentioned Richards? Fantastic Four. Okay. Right? Do we think <laughs> we're going to get a little Nate Richards? Like a little one? No. Like the scientist? Like introduction to him before he's 
Kang. It'd be you... cool if Nate Richards is working in like the lab like that he has. Like he's Kang, but he still has Nate Richards just like. I'm having deja like, vu. We've see, had like, this the, conversation the name tag. Before. He's just in the background, like typing away. He just like passed the screen. I want Nathaniel Richards scientist for a minute at least. If not in Ant-Man Quantum Mania, at least at some point along these next few phases, I would love that. You're 100% going to get it. I don't think you're going to get it in this. My guess is Loki season two. If that's anything, probably that's my definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Way smarter of a theory. Yeah. 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 I like that. Which I think it's cool that in Loki season one, if you go back to that, that Yellow Jacket's helmet appears. Like when they're running, they're like going yes. through like that mm-hmm. negative zone, whatever you want to call it. His helmet's just like sitting there and it's all kind of like full circle. He's Moda. The quantum realm is the secret to time travel. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a secret to time travel in Endgame. They all had to shrink right. to go down. I think you're on to something. And I think that's a Fantastic Four eventually working in there. Well, Pierre, you've had that rumor slash theory that the Fantastic Four were not out in outer space getting their powers, that it was actually the quantum realm. I didn't read that anywhere. So oh, that, that's all you? That's 100%. I don't think oh. that's really the thing. But it would be cool if they were stuck in some sort of loop. And then you get the 60s. Because remember in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, he says that they charted in the 60s it's like oh i thought you guys charted in the 60s da, da, da. what if they've been stuck in time since the 60s and they're back i want yeah. that so bad and then you get so you bad. get the 60s fantastic four much cooler here's what i want is the fantastic four blast off in the 60s and we get the whole movie with the fantastic four in the 60s whatever half the movie whatever they come back to present day and there's a memorial statues of all four of them and they come to life and start messing up shit and the reason why is because the puppet master got behind it all which is a very early fantastic four villain and he's the big bad for the fantastic four that's what i want but <laughs> i love this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's such a great idea <laughs> hit me up kevin i don't think it's gonna happen but <laughs> no, <neither laughs> I like the idea. my one thing that i did want to see and i'd mentioned this to kyle is somehow them involved with spider-man like i'd like to see them introduced in spider-man like he goes through the baxter building and he becomes the bombastic oh the bombastic bag man yeah 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 like you saw I, I yeah you like guys mentioned that, that in the last episode where you want to see bombastic Bagman, and i'm curious if you know why he became bombastic Bagman. his costume like he lost his costume or something like that how no i don't know how kyle do you know he was having intercourse with jane foster and he had to escape because thor came because he found out he had intercourse with jane foster and he had to run away real quick it was a symbiote suit. Fantastic Four was studying the symbiote and it got hit with a sound wave and jumped off of him. And they didn't know who he was yet. So he just ran into a broom closet and put on the Fantastic Bagman suit. So the sign on his back that says, kick me, is from Johnny Storm. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I wonder if my action figure has the little sign. Marvel Universe does have to kick me cool. sign. I have a Funko Pop up there I haven't opened. I wonder if that one has it. It should. If it doesn't have the kick me, Funko should be sued. Careful. Oh, uh, it doesn't have the kick me. What? Oh! Doesn't have the kick me. It's embarrassing. That makes me sad. Damn it. <laughs> oh, we could have just Googled it. <laughs> yeah, we could have. All right, so me and Dimitri were talking a little bit earlier about this, that we know X-Men's coming. Could we see some characters that are notorious for time traveling? Dimitri, the one you said was Hope Summers. Could this be a way of getting Cable or another version of Cable? Maybe the first mutants we get are third generation of the mutants that we know. I love the idea. Here's the problem. Deadpool's about to become canon. In Deadpool 2, Hope is dead. We know Hope is dead because Cable has said that she is dead. He's carrying around the bear for his fallen daughter. Mm, so we know that that version of hope is dead do i want to see someone who isn't josh brolin as cable in a million years yes i would love to see a good cable i'd love to see hope shots fired oh i hate him as cable for a one-line joke where deadpool gets to call him thanos there's so many better actors they could have cast but i digress that's an argument for another time fair enough oh god what's the storyline it's an x-men storyline she's a mutant that can like basically reset time and so every time she meets up with the it's myra every time Time she dies time starts over so she meets charles xavier and she tries to fix everything it doesn't work magneto tries to fix everything it doesn't work she meets with apocalypse tries to fix everything it doesn't work but i'm not sure currently what the deal is but that's her mutant power yeah no i agree with all of that i mean i love the time travel theory that i'm now pushing my and dimitri's thought of x-men into it but that's a good point jeremiah she is also a time traveler that, that would make some recent books worth something that could be an episode of loki her going through her multiple lives 
just trying to figure stuff out and then she runs into loki could mm-hmm. be the end of the movie too like after credit scene she's like popping in kang's mm-hmm. there that'd be dope so it's like she lives out her lifetime everything goes to shit she dies reboots figures out that's her like whole shit is that if she doesn't fix something she's gonna just die and restart and then kang like stops her and like i can help you child come with me all right so now <laughs> moving from mutants to another mcu movie that is completely and utterly unrelated to this trailer that we are talking about shang chi <laughs> did kang make the ten rings are the ten rings somehow associated with kang are they from the quantum something are they from space are they related do they have more powers than we think they're related to the eternals they're not related to the quantum realm definitely from space definitely yeah. have more powers than we know i'm calling it they're from the celestials okay mm-hmm. fair just i guess they got the same designer for some of the things in the quantum realm because some of the buildings kind of look like the rings there is a celestial part of the quantum realm if i'm not mistaken there's at least one Mm. that focuses their energies on Mm. microverses there's your connection and it might still circle back to kang but i think this is the wrong kang for this the tut one what's his name rama tut i'm excited to see that one the way to bring him is to bring also apocalypse back rama tut and apocalypse both in ancient egypt hey i'll let you go on because i know what you're going to do for me i mean apocalypse is the first mutant technically i mean namor is the first mutant. that would be cool it's namore oh you fuckers <laughs> <laughs> let's play this game and then i have one final thing to say before the movie comes out judging off of the trailer out of 10 what are you expecting this movie to be eight no no no, no that's safe that's safe i'm not gonna say eight a nine i'm going 10 10 mutant deformed shrunken down goats remember the first ant-man he's testing on goats and like trying to make them small imagine all the things that they tested on to make small actually made it to the quantum realm. if there's like a yeah. landfill and goats walk by that's gonna be an amazing easter egg that was the only thing they were turning into like little slime. i will boycott the movie but i will say they won't do something like that just because loki kind of did a trash pile world in a sense yeah i'm right there with pierre 10 I think this movie is going to be amazing, but I'm making this vow because I was disappointed with Black Panther in a sense with the trailer. If we have seen the final scene of the movie within this trailer, I am never watching another Marvel trailer ever again. If the final scene shows up again in a trailer, I'm not watching any more Marvel trailers. What was the final scene in Black Panther? Shiri crying, which is the opening of two trailers for Black Panther. The opening of the trailer is the final scene of the movie. Why was she crying again? (laughs) No, at the end. At the end, it was because of the kid, right? Well, no, she made her peace with T'Challa being gone and her mother being gone. So she burned her funeral garb. That's when you make peace with... That's why you wouldn't watch a trailer? The final scene of the movie's in the trailer. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, it wasn't the fight scene, though. (laughs) You're triggering him. (laughs) At least you got to see Namora. And Namora. Anyways... 7 out of 10 because everything in this world is mediocre and sucks and I hate it. Kang is going to steal the show, but he's only going to have 7 minutes in the whole movie. I say north of 20. Oh, Kang? Yeah, north of 20. Okay, you're going real high. All right, what about you, Dimitri? Under 15. Under 7. screen time do you see MODOK getting? More than he should. (laughs) Yeah, I'm right there with Kyle. I'd like to see him a lot, but I don't want to see him for more than like 20 minutes. (laughs) He's going to be the guy they're fighting against at first, and then he's going to turn, and then you're going to see him on that squad. It's like Ant-Man, the Wasp, Stinger, (laughs) MODOK. Just... (laughs) <laughs> they're all like fighting together it's gonna be great yeah, they're gonna be in a lab with him and he's gonna help them does he shoot a laser beam in this movie i said yes no. oh yes 100 percent. you can see the crystal on his fucking forehead it, it's he's happening not gonna laser beam. Sh- he's gonna yeah. get shot with something and he's gonna sh- i'm calling it now he's wearing the mask he's wearing the mask they're gonna get there they're gonna like try to fight him they're gonna beat him and then his mask is gonna open up it's like oh it's just me it's just me and he's gonna shoot him with lasers at first he's gonna like put up like somewhat of a fight they're gonna beat him up and he's gonna be like oh please come on i know your dad please and then he's gonna like be trickery man poison man and he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna turn around fuck Kang. let's let's fight together panelized podcast panelized podcast podcast and podcast Go pick this up. This is incredible. Children of the Black Sun. This is incredible. I haven't been buying any book. There's like nothing. I have to like go to the store myself. It's ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) Dimitri, you're nodding. No Fantastic Four. What? (laughs) 
<laughs> <laughs> Who's not making it out? Yes. Did you Just hear any of my questions? Short, brief. Okay. So you're not hearing me right. Yeah, you're lagging so much. And you just keep I kind of felt it randomly. a little bit. Just in, listen in your I bones. Talk. In real life, he's just like... Eh. Nothing different. Eh. I love lag, Dimitri. It's going to get to you. Oh, it's, we got it. We got it. And now your eyes are stuck in a weird position. <laughs> Since you lagged out most of the time and you seem to be okay now, do you want to... Do you have anything you want to input here? Because I lost most no. of what you've said, and it hasn't been much. No. A daredevil mask made of pure rubber, but if I oh, touch cool. it, my hand smells like a condom for 12 days. Don't you want it to smell like condom after touching a daredevil mask? Of course. Is it Moria or Myra? It's Myra. You don't know how Myra. to spell. <laughs> Dimitri's runtime in this episode is 45 seconds. You know, That's it's all. 45 seconds. I honestly didn't have much to say. I don't know that much about Ant Man. Or you also uh, didn't watch the trailer, Kang. right? <laughs> I watched the trailer. I honestly watched the trailer twice before the episode. I had one thing to say. I just thought that the Wasp, which I thought was Hope, which I thought we had a full conversation on, I said, "Is the Wasp Hope?" And then you talk about Hope Summers. What are we talking about? Oh, is that the Hope you meant? That's the Hope I meant. And I was going to bring it into West Coast Avengers because you're saying Captain America Four. He's making West Coast Avengers. That was my whole thing. And now Jeremiah is gone, oh, and he's like, "Oh my what the god." What the fuck are they talking about? Why did you just say why? This is for me. This whole episode and this whole hour is just, <laughs> nah, you know, just nah. I had one. I had one thing I wanted to add. <laughs> Jeremiah was like, I'm all right, lacking. Dimitri, it's your turn. I'm already you lacking. got this. I just and don't. Kyle I just took it away it. from you completely. You know what? He took it away. You know what? This was a bad one. I'll try again next time. Hold on. <laughs> the fact that you said this, this is such a great point. Like, they really are setting up the West Coast Avengers. Like, that's yeah, really that's what right. Hope is going to do. But it works for if they just decide, you know, Ant-Man is gone, but he's not really gone. He's just stuck somewhere. She's going to be all pouty, but she'll be part of the West Coast Avengers. And his kid, this his kid just running around. This is the best point of the whole episode. 